Hello and welcome to Game Changers, where we highlight stories of innovation from The Ohio State University. I'm Brittany Westbrook, and on this episode, we'll be talking with two amazing pioneers of climate research and their fascinating work across the globe. Now, ice is something many of us take for granted, but those living in communities dependent on glacial water cycles, ice isn't just part of life. It's a necessity for survival. And as the ice caps continue to recede worldwide, the impact on those communities will soon be felt across the globe. Here to talk with us about their amazing discoveries in ice core research at the Bird Polar Research Center is the husband and wife team of Lonnie and Ellen Mosley Thompson. Lonnie and Ellen, we thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Brittany. Now, you two have had quite a career. Um, what got you interested in kind of uh, packing everything up and climbing uh, into these high altitudes and actually looking into polar research? Well, uh, I came to Ohio State to study uh, geology, uh, actually cold geology, mm -hmm. because I think like most uh, uh, students, uh, you're looking for a career uh, and to get a job when you're finished. Mm -hmm. But my first uh, quarter at Ohio State, uh, I got an offer for a research position in what was then the Institute of Polar Studies. And they wanted me to look at ice cores from Antarctica and Greenland. And I had already had geomorphology and had decided that ice was, was not really important because it only covers 10% of the world's surface mm -hmm. and it's in places where people don't live. So how could you ever make a living looking at ice? <laughs> But it took about a, a year and a half at looking at some of these early ice core records to start to realize what the potential was. And you have been in the past, what, 30 years or so, just a lot of places. Tell me about where you've gone. Well, uh, I've been very fortunate, I think, to live in this age where um, uh, we have the, the technology mm -hmm. uh, and resources to move. In order to drill ice cores, we have to move six tons of equipment wow. into remote parts of the world uh, and uh, to be able to do that. So I've been fortunate to have conducted 57 expeditions wow. mm -hmm. in 16 different countries. Uh, and I really like working with other cultures, uh, so it's, it's been quite an experience. Okay, tell me, um, Ellen, about the Bird Polar Research Center. Well, Lonnie mentioned that um, he said, uh, that he started with the Institute of Polar Studies. Mm -hmm. That is, is actually is the Bird Polar Research Center. We're actually the oldest research center on a, uh, at Ohio State. Uh, we had just celebrated our 50th anniversary last mm -hmm. year. So in 19, thank you. Mm -hmm. And in 1960, we were uh, essentially sanctioned by the Board of Trustees as the Institute of Polar Studies. In 1986, we received a major endowment from the Richard E. Byrd Foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, part of that was to set up a postdoctoral uh, fellowship program, to uh, set up an archival program, and change our name to Bird Polar Research Center. And what are the goals of the center? The highest priority is to conduct multidisciplinary research. Mm -hmm. um, much of the university is organized according to departments, but at Bird Polar, we have people from many departments who have their laboratories and their graduate students. Mm -hmm. uh, so our emphasis is really on understanding the Earth's climate system from a multidisciplinary perspective. Our second goal is, of course, education. Educating our undergraduates, our graduate students, and we also have the Bird Fellowship, which is a postdoctoral program. Mm -hmm. And our third mission is outreach and education. What can uh, your travels tell us about what's happening in our own neighborhoods? Can we take this research back? And obviously you do bring it back here, but what does it tell us? Uh, when you when you talk about glaciers, uh, they're probably one of the most sensitive things we have on Earth to tell us about change taking mm -hmm. place. And in today's world, they're all retreating. And uh, as a result of that, they're, they're indicating that the system is changing. And this has all kind of implications to future sea level and the like. And when you talk about Ohio, you know, people don't get too excited about a one degree or two degree temperature. And in fact, in February, you'd say that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, when you change the mean level of the climate, you increase the chances of the extremes, uh, droughts, floods, uh, heat waves, and the like. Mm -hmm. And I would say in this part of the uh, country, this is one of the things we have to be uh, aware of going forward. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the uh, impacts um, 
with, in terms of Ohio and the Great Lakes region is that the water levels in the Great Lakes are falling. The water level is falling. Wow. And people don't realize that and they'd say, well, why do we really care about that? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, boat traffic, a lot of, you know, and mm -hmm. if you think about, uh, you, if the water levels fall, the boats can carry less. Uh, so it can have economic impacts, impacts on our farmers, you know, mm -hmm. when do they plant and what do they plant. And I know that you guys both do kind of different types of the same type of research. We're going to get to that a little bit when we come back and we'll get a closer look at just how this research is done in such extreme environments. That's when Game Changers returns.